Katzlois, Director of Research at the McGregor Company. Almost May, I can't believe it. And I was out putting some post-emergent spring grassy herbicides on one of our fall applied trials. And the reason that's interesting is the trial is about looking at, when we think about um, herbicide resistance management, we've been talking a lot about change, change cultural practices, change rotation, change your chemistries and change your timings. Well, a way that we can double dip and get two of those changes on one is changing to a fall pre-emergent herbicide program or a program that at least includes these fall pre-emergent pre programs. We're changing chemistries and changing timing. So we change the way that that crop actually can metabolize and views that chemistry. When you think about how you can let your spring post-emergent herbicides perform at their best, one of them is smaller weeds, right? Well, I have a really good example out here. So our um, fall pre plus post trial is actually behind me. It's on winter wheat. And we're looking at several different combinations of peroxisulfone with different um, contact type chemistries in the fall. And then what the addition of the spring post-emergent program. And a really good way to think about it is start clean, stay clean. So the part that I wanted to show you is we have some diversity plays out on the farm in winter oats and winter peas. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you what those trials look like. The thing that stuck out to me is the size of the broadleaf weeds we are trying to control in those trials. It's not why we set the trial up. It's just a really good example of doing a start clean, stay clean approach. We have much smaller weeds than when we're starting with our bigger weeds and trying to control them completely with a post-emergent. So let's go take a look at that. So what you're looking at is a winter oats trial. Um, this is actually a variety trial that's planted on the farm. Uh, winter oats just seems like a really interesting rotation, potentially a lot of biomass, something different than wheat. But here's the part that I wanted you to look at. So we have some several different broadleaf species. Look at the size of that broadleaf different dog fennel, prickly lettuce, pretty easy to find. We'll walk across that trial site, different mustard species. Some more good examples looking up the trial rows, little less crop competition, and you can see the size of those broadleaves. Take a look at the winter peas. We have quite a few, it's actually tame oats, but same as wild oats. Look at the size of those wild oats compared to the crop, or tame oats in this case. Prickly lettuce, dog fennel, mustards. You can see the size in comparison to the crop. Another great example is the untreated area in the middle of the trial. So here's the size, different weed species that we have. Mixed bag, tarweed, tansy mustard. This is the untreated check, just to show what crop competition does. You can see there's several different broadleafs in here. Especially when the crop competition gets a little weaker. There you go, there's your mustard, dog fennel, wild oat. Here's an example of a 3.25 ounce rate of Zidua. You can see this crop was slow in pokey, no fault of the Zidua. It's a north facing slope that got planted late and there just really is hardly any weed pressure, broadleaf or grasses. It's pretty incredible what the pre plus post program does in what it allows our fall or our spring post emergent applications to do. Let's see we just really can hardly find any of those weed species and when we do they're really small. Keep going. And we're gonna walk through tr several treatments, several different combinations and what I want you to take home is when those pre-emergent programs are in play we just really see very little broadleaf activity. The spectrum is wider than we give it credit for.